I'm making a twin stick action roguelike where you're chased by a mysterious corrupting force through a charming underground world. I'm going to be showing you how I approach writing music in this game by making heavy use of motifs and variations. Now as the lead developer, I have to be the artist, the programmer, the animator, the designer, the community manager, the writer, the accountant, Mr. Business, coffee bringer, soup maker, the ideas guy. <gasps> There's not enough time! Now, I love composing. It's something that I've done way before even I started working on games. But as the main developer on a indie game, one thing I don't have a lot of is time. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how I approach writing music for my indie game, how it improves time efficiency, and how some other really cool benefits too. I work on the game with two sound designers who I met when I was an audio programmer at Frontier Developments. And yes, that does mean there are three game audio people working on this game. If you want to support us, then you can go to our Steam page and you can add the game to your wishlist. That really helps us developers out with the Steam algorithm. And as a little bonus, you'll get a notification when the game gets launched. Okay. Let's write some music. Have you ever sat down to do something creative, but not know where to start? This blank page effect can suck up a lot of time. And when I sat down to start writing music, I knew I wanted to reduce it as much as possible. Now, one way I've found to speed up this process is by making use of motifs and variations. A motif is a recurring melody or phrase that repeats throughout a soundtrack. Some of your favorite films and games have really famous motifs, such as Mario, Star Wars, and Jurassic Park. And now for a copyright friendly performance of Star Wars. <laughs> When I was searching for inspiration for the music of Beyond the Long Night, one soundtrack that really jumped out at me was Celeste by Lena Rain. In Celeste's soundtrack, Lena Rain uses the same core melodies over and over again, but each time they're tweaked slightly. And instead of becoming boring and repetitive, it actually makes the soundtrack feel a lot more memorable. As I wanted to do the same thing, I needed to create a core motif myself. And this, unfortunately, did take a lot of time. Let me introduce you to the absolute joy of writing music when you never learnt to play the piano. Do, 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 oh, do, wrong one, do. Just keep drawing the men, just keep drawing the men. <laughs> but finally, I landed on this. I'd finally created the main motif for my game. And to be honest, I was really, really damn happy with it. But this track had taken me months to finish. And I did not want to spend that amount of time on every track I wrote. So it was time to put that motif into good use. Every time I start a new piece of music for Beyond the Long Night, I do a few things. First of all, I set some restrictions for how the music is going to behave. And by setting some starting parameters, I find it much easier to start a new track. It's kind of similar to restricting yourself to a colour palette when you're drawing something. I find if I leave myself with too many options, I just find it harder to make good choices. In the music for my forest area, I wanted to reflect the fact that the game world is caught in a time loop. So I based the entire song around lots of repeated descending patterns. For the temple area, I wanted to reflect the fact that the player was travelling further upwards, but also include an element of chaos in there, as the area had increased in difficulty. So now, the repeated patterns go up, and the music is in 7-8, which is a particularly weird, irregular time signature. So now that I have some starting parameters for my track, I do something that's known in music as variation. That's when you take a phrase or a motif from a previous song, and you transform it into something new. 
I feel like this is best explained with an example. So let's jump into my music software and I'll show you what I mean. Well, welcome to Reaper. This is the, the DAW that I use or audio program that I use for making all of my music. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how I took the main theme for my game and tweaked it, um, added some variations to it to make uh, a, an entirely new song. So we're gonna start off with this line from the main theme. So let's have a little listen. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this section here, these five notes, and we're going to alter them a little bit to create a new song. So we'll start off, we'll just delete all of this, get rid of it. Don't need you anymore. What happens if we, instead of playing them upwards, we switch them around and we went down. So give me one second and I will show you what that sounds like. Okay, and now we have this. You know, that's quite nice. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make the rhythm of this a little bit more regular. I'm gonna make these notes start on the beat. And because we got five notes and I want this to be in 4-4, four four, um, I'm just gonna have to remove my least favorite notes. So we'll pick one of these and we'll decide which one is the worst. All right, so now we've got this. There's obviously the same notes are in both phrases, but this is a different rhythm, the notes are a different order. And this here, this is now just gonna become the basis of our new song. So we'll delete this, and we're gonna see where this song takes us. Okay, so uh, this is what I ended up with, right? Um, so to just kind of go through it with you, uh, we started with these four notes here. I've repeated that a few times. Um, and then on the second group of four, I've, I've bumped the bass note up a little bit and I've brought down these two notes, but only on the second half of it. And then for this ending bit here, uh, what I've done is I've I've kind of reversed it. I've I've gone up instead, um, and I've just done this little run down here just to break up the the patterns a little bit. This is what we ended up with. Writing like this has a couple of really cool benefits. For one, the music is a lot quicker to write because it's much easier to get started. And that initial variation that you play with can trigger new ideas as well, which themselves can be turned into motifs and variations later on. I feel like this makes the soundtrack more memorable and consistent overall as well. Because each new song builds off previous music, everything feels familiar while still being different enough to avoid the soundtrack getting boring. It's a simple and fun way to build out a soundtrack. And if you ever find yourself staring at the blank page a lot, then maybe give this technique a go.